This is going to be a series of videos where I go into a little bit more detail than I normally would on building a new table saw. These first two pieces that I'm making here are probably the most important in the whole build. They hold the arbor, which the saw blade uh, attaches to, and they have to be made perfectly. They have to be a match set in order for everything to line up properly. The best way to make sure that both pieces come out the same, I have to drill holes in this, is to fasten it together. Uh, can use double-sided tape for that, but I have a pin nailer, so I'm going to use that to drive four pins in the corners where they're not going to get in the way of anything that I have to drill. Since I'm designing this as I go, I don't have any finished plans drawn up yet. But what I do have is the SketchUp model that I've got done so far. Just using my phone to take a picture of the screen and using that. This first hole is 5 eighths of an inch and that's for a steel pivot pin for the lift. This next one is for the bearings in the arbor and these are probably the most important in the whole saw. And finally, this last one is one and three eighths, and that matches the bearings in the lift mechanism. This recess that I'm cutting here is for a steel plate that will go on top of the bearing on the blade side. This is the retainer that the back of the bearing will press against. One gets mounted on the inside of the saw blade side plate and the other one on the inside of the pulley side plate. Got both of them glued on. I let the glue dry enough that I can continue. I cut these blocks and what these are are spacers that go between the sides and the thickness or the distance is equal to the distance between bearings on the arbor itself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue these in place on the blade side plate first and let that dry. And then I can flip it over and drive in a pair of one and a half inch screws. So I've got the pulley side plate put on and the bearing put on as well, and they're seated well. And I lined everything up, I took my combination square, I made sure it's a square at the end here, they're both in, in line, which is good. And now I can go ahead and get some screws put in this side. I'm not using any glue in this joint though. I don't really have an official name for this part, but it has the bearings on it that engages the part that swivels up, that has the arbor in it. So I'm going to make it from a larger piece of hard maple, cut it down to size, and then bring it over to the lathe and turn the ends so that the bearings will fit on there.
Okay, that much done, I need to drill a hole through for the lead screw. What the lead screw does is it pushes this thing ahead to lift the blade up and pulls it back to lower the blade. And my preference would be to have a T-nut for this, but I don't have any for half inch rod. So I'm gonna use a nut instead and I'm drilling a three quarter inch counter bore about the depth of the thickness of the nut. And then I'll finish off drilling the half inch hole. Epoxy will probably hold this in forevermore, but I don't want to take the chance. I'm going to drive a couple screws in as well, and that way for sure it's never going to come out. With that much done, I cut out the parts for the ends where the trunnions are. Now I left the part long so that I could mark out the radius for the trunnion directly on the part, because otherwise the pivot point is not on the piece itself. It's above it. And I need those marks there to correctly line up the trunnions after I cut them. Then I cut out the other parts that go in between and fasten those to the parts that I already cut out. And the easiest way to do that is to cut a spacer, the right thickness, and then I spring clamp that onto the edge and that lines up the part exactly. I could get it glued and fire in some pins and then I can get the next one put on in exactly the same way with the spacer in between. And then after both are fastened, I can drive in some screws. And it's basically the same procedure over again for the one at the back. The lead screw goes through the front one and one way to do that is just to drill a half inch hole, but I happen to have a bronze bushing, so I'm gonna drill a 7 8 inch hole and then set that in. These washers that I have here are actually quarter inch fender washers that I drilled out to a half inch hole. I find that half inch washers have a hole that's a little bit too big for the half inch rod. Another option is to use 7 16 inch washers, which have a more snug fit on the half inch rod. Now with all those parts made that fit together, I can actually kind of temporarily put it together and see how everything lines up. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the blade side piece on that connects the two ends. And I'm not gonna glue this part on. I'm just using screws for now. I may glue it later after everything is finalized. But I wanna be able to take it apart if I have to, so screws will do for now. All right, I had to make a couple of adjustments off camera, and I'm probably gonna to have to make a couple more again after this. But that's the nature of designing something as you're going. You know, you've got to be constantly checking for clearance and other issues. And luckily, nothing major has cropped up. Anyway, here's how it works. I'm just going to turn the rod so you can see the action. 